Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Cracking Codes with Python and in this video we're gonna learn how we can encrypt and decrypt entire files. Let's get right into it. In the previous videos we covered how we can encrypt and decrypt small messages. In this video we're going to cover how we can encrypt and decrypt entire files. And those files can of course contain millions of characters. To follow along you can head over to inventwithpython.com, the link is also in the description down below. We're going to work with a couple of different plain text files and those are simple text files that are not formatted. Those are for example files that can be open in Notepad. And to download some samples that we're going to work with, we can head over to the resource page for the book. The link is in the description down below. And if we scroll down all the way, we can find an area where we can download the source file for the book. Now once downloaded, we can unzip the file and have a look at the content. And here we can see a number of different text files, for example, the dictionary text file or the Frankenstein text file. And we're going to use those as part of the program we're going to write. And in order to write a program that can open a file, encrypt or decrypt its content, and then create a new output file with an encrypted or decrypted message, we're going to open up idle and create a new file. Now we're going to save that file as transpositionfilecipher.py and then we can write our code. Now in our program, we're going to start out by importing a couple of different modules. This includes, for example, our transposition encrypt and decrypt file that we wrote in some of the previous videos. But we're also going to import the system module to be able to quit our program, for example. And we also need the time module in order to time some functions and the OS module that gives us access to some operations on the operating system level. For example, checking if a certain pass exists. Then we have our main function here and we start out by defining an input file that we want to read from. Of course, we need to make sure that this file is then located in the correct folder. So we need to make sure that it's actually accessible to our program. We then also specify an output file name. This is going to be the file that either contains the encrypted or decrypted content. And we're gonna call it frankenstein.encrypted.txt. We also need to provide the key for our transposition cipher as before. And then we specify the mode, whether we want to encrypt or decrypt a message. Now, first of all, we're then going to check if the input file that we specify up here actually exists or not. And if it does not exist, if we cannot find it, then we're going to print out that the file does not exist. And we're going to use the exit function that is part of the sys module in order to terminate our program. Now, if the output file that we specified up here already exists, we want to ask the user if the user really wants to override the existing file. So in this case, we're going to print a message that we are going to override this file and they can either confirm by pressing C or they can quit the operation by pressing Q. And if the user presses any other key other than C to continue, then we're gonna again exit our program. But if the output file does not yet exist or if the user decides to override that file, we're going to read in the message from the input file and for that, we are going to use the open function and the open function always accepts an input file as an argument. And we're going to store that open file under the name file object. And then we can call the read function on that file object. And that allows us to read out the content of a text file and store its content in a variable. We then always need to make sure that we actually close our file. And then we are printing out if we are encrypting or decrypting the message. or well, that we're using this percent %s string and then we are passing the value for my mode, which we specified up here to it. And that's going to replace this part here. And we are just adding ing for encrypting or decrypting to it. After that, we're going to measure how long the encryption or decryption takes. So for that, we are going to use our time module that we imported. And as part of that, there's a time function included. We are going to use that to save the start time to a variable. And then depending on whether we selected encrypt or decrypt for my mode, we're going to call our encrypt message or decrypt message function, which is part of our transposition encrypt or transposition decrypt module. And then to measure the total time, we're going to take the current time after performing that operation. And we're going to subtract the start time that we determined before we actually executed the encrypt or decrypt operation. And we're going to round it to two digits. And then we're going to print out how long this took in seconds. After that, we of course need to store our either encrypted or decrypted message. And for that, we are going to use the open function again. And we can pass a second argument to that to 
write to a file. So here we are specifying the output file name and we are passing w as a second argument and that ensures that we actually open that file in write mode and can make changes to it. We are then calling write on the output file object and we pass a translated variable to it, which is the output we got by either encrypting or decrypting our message. And finally, again, we need to close our file. And then in the end, we are going to print out that we are done encrypting or decrypting our file and we also specify how many characters were actually encrypted or decrypted. And we are also printing out the name of the output file in which the encrypted or decrypted message is contained. And of course, at the very end, we again need to add our if statement here. If name is equal to the main string, then we are going to execute our main function just to make sure that we can actually execute the main function and run our program. Now, in order to see our program in action, let's run our program. And for that, again, we need to make sure that our frankenstein.txt file is contained in the same folder as our program. And if that's the case, then we can go ahead and press run. And then we can see in this case here, we are starting to encrypt the message because this is a mode that we specified. And then we can see the encryption time. So here it just took 0.2 seconds. And we are then done encrypting frankenstein.txt. We can see we had 441,000 characters roughly and the encrypted file is called frankenstein.encrypted.txt. And let's open up our original frankenstein.txt file. This is a text and we can see it's quite long. So if we scroll down, we can see we have a lot of text in here, but everything is readable. But after running our program, we have a second file called frankenstein.encrypted.txt. And if you have a look at that, we can see it's not readable anymore because this is our encrypted file. Now that we see that our program works properly, let's have a closer look at the new functions. And the first one is the open function here that we use to open a file. So in our case, we pass the input file name as an argument to the open function in order to open the frankenstein.txt file. And the open function's first parameter is always the name of the file to open. So in this case here, we are using this variable which corresponds to frankenstein.txt. And as we run this open function, we get back a file object that we can store in a variable. Here we are storing it in file object and we can then use that variable to read from or write to the file. We could also optionally specify a path to a file. So rather than just passing the name of the text file, we could pass an entire path to it. And when we run the open function, we can open a file in read mode, which is a default mode. So this call here is equivalent to the following. So this is the same as if we passed a second argument to it with an R. So this would stand for read and that's the default mode. So we don't even have to specify that. But we can provide some other additional arguments, one of which we can see down here. So if we want to open a file in order to write it, then we would pass W as a second argument. And that allows us to write to that file. And whenever we are done working with the file, we need to tell Python that we have completed work on the file by actually closing it. So therefore we are calling the close function down here after we wrote some text to our file and we also closed the file up here after we were done reading the file. Now once we open the file, either in read mode or in write mode, we can then make some changes to it. So in case of opening a file in read mode, we can then use the read function and the read function returns a string containing all the text in the file. On the other hand, we can also use the write function if we open a file in write mode and that allows us to write some text. In our case, the translated, so the encrypted or decrypted text to that particular file. Before we actually ever open a file to read or write it, we are checking up here if a file exists. And this is necessary so we don't run into any errors when we try to open a file that actually does not exist. And for that, we are calling the exists function, which is part of the OS module, and we pass the input file name as an argument to it. And this function is either going to return true if that file exists or false if that file does not exist at the specified location. So in this case, in the same folder that we're actually running our program from. We also have another new concept that we didn't cover before. Here, when we are asking the user if we should continue overriding a file, we're using the lower function or lower string method to change our response to all lowercase characters and the lower function allows us to turn capital characters into lowercase characters. And that helps us a lot because even if a user types a capital C, 
the lower function is going to turn it into lowercase c and then we can check if our response actually starts with a lowercase c. And our starts with function here checks if a word starts with a specified character. So here if we type continue for example or maybe c-o-n-t, in either case c is the first character so that would return true and then we are going to exit the program. And with these new concepts, with the open function, the read function, the write function, the close function, we are able to encrypt or decrypt large text files and store that encrypted or decrypted message as a new text file. Let's next have a look at the practice questions. And the first question is whether the call os.exists or the function call os.pass.exists is correct. In this case, the second option, os.pass.exists, is correct because we are checking if a file exists as a specified pass, and this is part of the OS module. So this is going to either return true or false, depending on whether the specified file passed as an argument to that function actually exists in the location. The next question is, when is the Unix epoch? And when we use the time function, the start point for the time function is a specified date. Specifically, that corresponds to January 1st, 1970, at midnight. So that is basically the start point for the Unix epoch, so that would have a value of zero, and any date after that has then a positive value, and we can use that as a reference point, as a zero point, basically. Now the third question is, what do the following expressions evaluate to? First of all, we have the starts with function, and we're passing foo as an argument to it, and we're calling that on a string called foobar. And we know that our starts with function either returns true or false, depending on whether the argument specified here actually corresponds to the beginning of the string that we call that function on. And if we have a look at that, we can of course see that foobar indeed starts with foo, so this should evaluate to true. Let's open up our interactive shell in idle, and let's have a look if that is indeed correct. So here we are writing foobar, the string, and recalling starts with on it, and we pass foo as an argument to that function. And indeed, we can see that evaluates to true. Now, the second expression is foo.startsWith, and we pass foobar as an argument to starts with. So we basically flipped the string on which we call that function, and then the argument we pass to the function. And we're basically checking if the string foo starts with foobar, which of course is not true, because foobar is not at the beginning of foo. So therefore, this should evaluate to false. Let's double check that in our interactive shell by typing in foo.startsWith and we pass foobar as an argument. So we can indeed see this evaluates to false. Now after that, we have an expression that's quite similar to the first one. Again, we have foobar and we check if that starts with foo. The only difference is that in this case, foo is in lowercase characters. And therefore, since we are checking for the exact string, Fuba with a capital F actually does not start with a lowercase f, so therefore this will evaluate to false. And again, we can check that in our interactive shell. And indeed, this is false. If we were to change this f to a capital F, then of course that would be true. Now the next expression uses the ends with function. And here we are checking if the end of the string actually ends in a specified argument. So here we are checking whether bar ends with the string fuba. And we have the same problem as in the second case here. We are basically checking if the string here, bar, ends with foobar. Of course, that's not correct. Foobar does end with bar, but not the other way around. So this will evaluate to false, which we can, of course, check in our interactive shell. And this is indeed false. But if we do the reverse, so if we check if foobar ends with bar, that will evaluate to true. So again, we can add that in our interactive shell. And here this evaluates to true. And finally, we are using the title function. So we here we have a string, the quick brown fox jumped over the yellow lazy dog, and we call dot title on it. And we saw before that we can use the lower and the upper function to turn a string into lowercase or uppercase. There's also a third option available, which is a title case. So the title function is going to capitalize the first character of each word and is going to turn all other characters in that word to lowercase. So therefore, if we run this expression here, we should actually see that T, Q, B, F, and so on and so forth, always the first character of each word is capitalized and everything else is displayed in lowercase. Let's double check that in our interactive shell. So here we're going to add our string and we're going to call dot title on it. And here we can see that 
if you have a look at that, the first character of each word is capitalized and all the other characters are displayed in lowercase. We learned how we can encrypt and decrypt entire files using the transposition cipher. Unlike the Caesar cipher that we covered a couple of videos ago, the transposition cipher has too many possible keys to attack by brute force. But if you could write a program that understands English, we could examine the output of the decryption attempts and see which one works best to figure out what the key might be. We're going to do that in the next video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date and see you guys in the next video.